These are the directions for the pi-mol protein folding assignment. In this assignment, we will look at how hydrogen bonds can form between atoms of the peptide backbone and confer rigidity to the structure and form secondary structural elements such as the alpha helix and the beta sheet. The protein that we will use for this assignment has a PDB code 2AC0 and is a DNA bound tetramer of the famous oncoprotein P53. We'll study more about the function and structure of P53 later on in the course, but today we're only interested in the hydrogen bonds of its backbone. After you access the PDB text file from the protein data bank, load it in PyMol and follow the steps outlined in the first PyMol lecture video. Be sure that you change the color scheme to gray carbons and the sphere scale to 0.3, just like we did in the previous assignment. We are now looking at a P53 tetramer, which is the functional unit of P53. The molecule P53 does not function alone, but in cooperation with three other proteins similar to hemoglobin. You'll also notice that this structure incorporates some of P53's DNA binding region. We'll study more about DNA later on in the course. What I'd like to do now is simplify our view so that we can focus in and study the hydrogen bonding of the peptide backbone itself. To do this, we're going to eliminate some of the extra P53 structures that come along with this structure. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and click on all of the DNA molecules. And then also, we're going to click on all of the proteins, and we're going to go ahead and hide everything. Notice that there's another way that we could have done that. We could have also scrolled on the top of the screen and then found each molecule, highlighted it, and then hid that one as well. So it's already hidden, so it can't be hidden, hidden again. But that's the other way to hide and show molecules. You can see now I'm scrolling over to the fourth P53 molecule. At the end of the sequence, we can see these new kinds of sequences. That's representing the... DNA. We can show the DNA again. We can show the cartoon. There's our DNA. We can uh, hide it for now. Hide everything. And then we can scroll further and then find the last DNA sequences. All right, now that we've hidden the extra P53 molecules and its DNA, we can go ahead and zoom up to the molecule and get a nice close-up view of P53. The first thing that I'd like us to do is to select the entire molecule. Make sure that you're on selecting state molecule. If you're on selecting state object, you'll reselect the entire P53 tetramer, which is what we don't want to do. So select the entire uh, molecule, right click, and let's show the sticks and let's show the spheres. This is a familiar ball and stick model that we created from the previous assignment. Since I'd like to look at the hydrogen bonding of the alpha helix first, hide some of the other parts of the structure so that it's less distracting. To do this, we're going to change our selecting state to residues, hide most of the molecule except for the alpha helix. How do we do that? The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find a part of the molecule that is directly adjacent to the alpha helix. See this part of the molecule right here? This is right after the alpha helix. Let's go find that part of the molecule. What we can do is then highlight the molecule here and we notice that we've found our alpha helix. Since we want to look at our alpha helix, we're going to hide everything except for that area of the molecule. So let's go ahead and drag our selection to the entire molecule including the end and this zinc atom at the end. And we're going to hide everything. And notice that all we're left with is our alpha helix. Before we can measure the hydrogen bonds of the backbone, we first need to change the transparency of the cartoon so that we can see the atoms that are involved. To do this, we're going to change the transparency of the cartoon to 40%. As you can see, this allows us a better view of the backbone and we'll be able to see the areas where the hydrogen bonding will occur. Something important that you may have already noticed is that the structure is missing hydrogen atoms. 
In fact, all crystallography data is missing hydrogen atoms. This is because the X-rays that are used in the experiment have wavelengths that are too large to pick up the very small hydrogen atoms. If we want to visualize where those hydrogen atoms are, we have to have the program add the hydrogen atoms artificially into the structure. To add in those missing hydrogen atoms, we need to enter some language into the PyMol command line. And then enter the following command, h underscore add, and then the name of the PDB file in parentheses. In this case, it's 2ac0. Once we hit enter, PyMol will have added in the coordinates for all those missing hydrogen atoms. To view them, let's re-highlight the alpha helical section of the molecule, change the selecting state to residues, and go ahead and re-select the alpha helix. Show the sticks, and then show the spheres. And now we can see all those newly added hydrogen atoms. Now we're ready to begin measuring our hydrogen bonds. Let's do a zoom up to our alpha helix and identify one of our first hydrogen bonds in the backbone. Here we can see a nitrogen, a hydrogen, and an oxygen all in a straight line. This is an indication of a hydrogen bond. We also notice that there's a really close proximity between the hydrogen and the oxygen. To measure this proximity, we're going to use the measurement wizard. Click on wizard measurement. At this time, anytime we use the left mouse button click, we're going to be either beginning or ending one of our measurements. Come over to the hydrogen atom and click directly in the center. That's the beginning of our measurement. And then click directly in the center of our oxygen. That completes our measurement and gives us a distance of about two angstroms. This is exactly what we would expect for a hydrogen bond between these two atoms. Now the yellow dash is a little bit hard to see, so let's go up to the setting, edit all, and we're going to change the dash color. So scroll down to dash, and let's use magenta. Now the dash color stands out a bit more from the background. Now let's continue down the helix and find more hydrogen bonds. Keep in mind that these are the interactions that hold the helix in this conformation and allow the protein to fold. Let's find the next hydrogen bond. I can already see one. Click on the hydrogen and click on the oxygen. There's our next hydrogen bond right around two angstroms, which is what we expect. Continuing down the helix, here's another one. And another one here. Just keep rotating the structure to find all the hydrogen bonds. And then eventually we get to the end where there will not be any more hydrogen bonds. This hydrogen from this nitrogen is, uh, does not have a hydrogen bonding uh, partner in the structure. Let's go up to the top and find any hydrogen bonds that we missed at the other termini of the helix. Another one. And uh, right here, at this point, we're, we've gotten to the end of the hydrogen bonding network. It looks like there might be a hydrogen bond between this oxygen and this hydrogen, but you can see when we actually make the measurement, the distance between those two atoms is 3.1 angstroms, which is too far for a typical hydrogen bond. So this is not really a hydrogen bond. To eliminate this measurement, we can come over here. This was measurement nine. We can hide the dashes and then hide the label to get rid of that hydrogen bond or we can simply delete the entire measurement. That's another way to remove that measurement. All right, at this point we've found all the hydrogen bonds in the alpha helical backbone of this part of the protein. However, there are other hydrogen bonds in the structure that we're looking at. There are hydrogen bonds between side chains of the amino acids. If we kind of inspect the structure, we can start to try to find some of them. Just take a look around. Let's look first at the uh, one of the helices. Can you see anything that looks like it might be a hydrogen bond? Something that's about two angstroms in distance. I think I see one right here. There's a hydrogen bond between the guanidinium of the arginine and the carboxylic acid of the aspartate right here. You can see that this is actually a hydrogen bond as well. Since we still have the measurement wizard on, let's go ahead 
and make that measurement, 2.1 angstroms. That's right around what we would expect for a hydrogen bond. That's another hydrogen bond, but one that isn't in the backbone of the structure. Since we're done measuring for a while, come to the right panel and click Done. This exits us from the measurement wizard so that we don't accidentally make any more measurements as we manipulate the structure. We can zoom out to take a broader look at the alpha helix. What you should do now is prepare this image for insertion into a Word document, change the background to white, and save the PNG. It's also really important that you save the session. We're going to use the same alpha helix in the following PyMol assignment, so if you save the session now, you'll save yourselves a lot of work later on when we have to look at the dihedral angles of the alpha helix in the following assignment. And now we can finish the assignment. What I'd like to look at next is the major secondary structural feature of the P53 molecule, which is the beta sandwich motif, which is made of two beta sheets. To look at the entire molecule again, toggle over to molecules from the selecting state and show the molecule's entire cartoon. Let's zoom out and reposition the molecule so that we can see our complete view. All right, there's our beta sandwich motif. You can see there's also another helix down here, a small one, but the main core of the protein consists of this beta sandwich motif, two beta sheets, one on top of another. What I'd like us to do now is to create a similar picture using the beta sheet so that we can get an idea of the hydrogen bonding patterns of the beta sheet. To do that, come over to the selecting state and toggle over to residues, and we're going to do the same thing we did for the alpha helix. We're going to delineate the different sides of each beta strand and then highlight the residues between those termini and show the sticks and the spheres. All right, that's one of the strands that we're going to be interested in. Let's also show the atoms on both sides of that strand so that we can draw the hydrogen bonding for three strands together to form a more extended beta sheet structure. Again, let's click on the backbone on either side of this beta strand and then use the scroll bar to come find where we just selected. Highlight all the atoms or highlight all the amino acids in between, show sticks, and then show the spheres. Okay, and then let's find the last one. All right, so now we have a complete view of all the atoms from this part of the P53 protein. At this point, we're ready to zoom into our beta sheet structure and begin looking at some hydrogen bonds that form between the beta strands. These are the hydrogen bonds that hold together this part of the molecule. You can zoom in. We already found one of them. Let's uh, access the measurement wizard and start measuring these hydrogen bonds. Here's one. There's another one here. You're going to have to tilt the structure a bit so that you don't accidentally touch the cartoon. Here's another one here and another one here. We can start to see this uh, pattern between the hydrogen bonds of the beta strand. All right, so we've completed finding the hydrogen bonds of that entire strand. You can see the pattern there. Oh, there's one more here. There we go, so let's like look down the structure and see all of them. But remember, there's hydrogen bonds on the other side of this beta strand as well. So we'll find those. Here's another one here. It's a little hard to see some of them because there's so many side chains in the way, but if you rotate the structure around, you'll find all the hydrogen bonds. You can even rotate it this way and see one. Here's one on the back side here, another one here. Anything else? It looks like we might have found all of them. Ah, oh, there's one here that we missed. That seems to be all the hydrogen bonds in this part of the structure. There's obviously plenty more hydrogen bonds holding the protein folding together, but
but that's all for this part of the structure. Now that we've finished measuring our hydrogen bonds, we can come to the right side and turn off the measurement wizard. I'd also like to add some final touch-ups to the structure to make it a little bit more presentable. Come down to the bottom and change the selecting state to molecules. Highlight the whole molecule and we're going to actually change the color scheme of the molecule slightly. We're going to go to, down to set 5 and select this color scheme down here. This color scheme has a darker gray shade to the carbons. So notice what that looks like when we change the color scheme. It's a lot easier to tell the difference now between the carbons and the hydrogens. I think this is a nice thing to do for this assignment because we're really trying to highlight an aspect of the hydrogens. Since the structure looks a little bit cluttered still, there's something else we can do to make our view a little bit better and make the molecule a little bit more presentable. Let's go back up to the structure and we're going to hide a certain kind of hydrogen. We're going to hide the nonpolar hydrogens. This won't eliminate the important hydrogen bonding hydrogens that we found, but it will eliminate the alkyl hydrogens, which are not really very important for us in this assignment. So notice that all those alkyl nonpolar hydrogens are now gone, and it's a lot easier to see those hydrogen bonds that we found in this assignment. If you're looking for hydrogen bonds in the future and want to speed up the process, it might be a good idea to turn off the alkyl nonpolar hydrogens in the beginning so that it's easier to see what you're working with in the backbone. There's one final finishing touch that we can add to the structure to make it really nice. Something I don't really like about this image is that these numbers are a little bit ugly and a little bit distracting. They were nice for us as we were measuring because we were able to make sure that all the bonds that we were measuring were around two angstroms. But for now, it might be nice to turn them off. Click setting at the top and hit edit all and then scroll down until you find label size. Right now the labels are by default set to 14. If we change that to zero, it's actually going to make our labels disappear. Now we have a really nice presentable image that will ray trace to give us a really nice looking picture. This brings us to the end of the assignment. Go ahead and position the structure in a nice way that shows the alpha helix. Change the background to white ray trace the image and we have our image for insertion into our assignment. The second image we need is the one of the beta sheet so let's reposition the structure and make a nice tight framing to show off the measurements that we made on the beta sheet. You can ray trace this and this is going to be a nice image for your assignment right there. In addition to the two required images of the alpha helix and the beta sheet, you have the option to get some extra credit by handing in two additional images along with the assignment. The first optional image should be of a beta turn. Explore the structure and find a beta turn between two beta strands. Measure the hydrogen bond and make a nicely framed image showing the beta turn. The second optional image should be of the zinc binding motif. Show the zinc atom as a sphere and find the three cysteines and one histidine that coordinate the atom and stabilize that part of the P53 structure. I hope that this first pymol assignment was interesting and that it gave you a better idea of the electrostatic forces involved in protein folding. And don't forget to save this pymol session file because we're going to use it in the next pymol assignment.